All right, hey everybody. Welcome to Fly Tying Tuesdays. My name's Brady, and we're gonna tie a sparkle done today. So similar to a comparadon, really the only change is your tailing material, your tail. Um, we're gonna start with our TMCO 102Y dry fly hook and our UTC 70 denier olive. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and prepare to tie in our hair wing. So, let's see here, get my thread where I want it. A couple of hook eyes back behind to tie this down. And we're gonna use some short fine deer hair. This is from Wopsy Short Fine Deer Hair. This is the dyed dark dun color. And I'm gonna grab a hank that's about comparable to the hook gape on this pattern. You can see there, maybe a little bit more, but it'll thin out as I clean it here. So we're gonna do just that. Take the tips into our other hand and clean out that fur. Use our dubbing comb, dubbing brush, whatever you got to get all that under fur out of there. Have some nice clean deer hair fibers to tie down. So from there, we're gonna stack these using a small stacker for the short hair that I'm using today. Makes life easy. Use a big one, it can be really hard to keep the, the bundle of hair together when you take the hair stacker apart here like this. So I'm gonna turn around backwards so that I can grab these tips with my right hand. Tie them in reverse to how you usually tie in hair on a lot of other patterns. Okay, so we got our tips nicely aligned there, like you can see, and I'm, I'm gonna pull it out with my right hand, because that's how I'm gonna tie it in. So you don't have to transition on, it helps keep these tips aligned there. Everything else you typically take out with your left hand when you're tying them in rearward. But I'm gonna use my hook shank to measure how long I want my wing to be. And we will take that measurement right up to the front here. And do a couple of loose wraps to capture all of that hair. And spin my thread rearward so that it'll, or counterclockwise so that it wraps rearward here for me. And then we can kind of just make sure we're in the right spot on that hook. I want to be, again, a couple of hook eyes back. And we can go ahead and secure the hair to the hook with some nice snug, snug wraps here. And we'll work our way back a little bit, keeping that all in place. Just like so. And then we can come up and under and clip out that excess material. Get as close as we can without clipping that thread. And if you cut it kind of at an angle, it'll help you transition here. I always like to come in and kind of thin it out as well. These doctors, I'm using these Dr. Slick razor scissors. I haven't featured them really in any video so far. Let's see. Uh, but you can see they're the arrow point, but they're still the razor scissors, and so they're adjustable. These are by far my favorite scissors. Super fine detail work, super sharp. They're great for flies like this when you're working with hair, fine, fine hair, and smaller patterns. Just a great product from Dr. Slick. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on back. Starting to create a taper to this body, kind of snugging down that deer hair to try and minimize the bump that we got going on here. Like so, gradually on back. So now we're gonna use our tailing material. So this is where it's different than a traditional comparadon. This one we're going to use some Sparkle Emerger yarn. I'm using a light olive color today. And I'm going to grab you know, six or eight of these fibers, just like so. And basically, this is going to be imitating a trailing chuck on, a, on an emerging mayfly. So maybe they're not full swing. Maybe they're still just kind of coming off the surface and stuck in the film. Still shedding that chuck from their emerging 
uh, period, they're going to have something trailing behind them. And this is kind of where this, this comes in the, to imitate that. Actually, quite a few more than six. Or, this is probably closer to 10 or 12 fibers total. I'm going to take it. And tie it on in. I always like to tie it in long and then I can kind of pull it back to where I want it to rest and you sort of use this material to also help graduate that taper of the fly. So we'll tie it in so that it's hanging right out the back. Now that we have the tail secured or the trailing check, we're going to kind of measure it out and clip it about the length of the body. You can go a little long, not too crucial. And then I always like to kind of come in and just taper it a little bit, feather it, whatever term you'd like. I just don't like it to be all that even and straight, just a nice little trailing chuck there. From there, we can start to dub our body. And for this, I'm gonna use just some super fine dubbing in straight olive today. So this is kind of a nice BWO imitation. Tie this in many different mayfly colors. Um, really the sky's the limit. Watch out for that hook point. With this fly, it's a great low profile mayfly imitation. Low writing. So nice super fine noodle. Super fine is great because it's easy to make a noodle. It stays so taut that it's hard for water to penetrate. Helps to make the fly stay buoyant longer. And as I go forward, I'm gonna use this super fine dubbing to create kind of a prop behind the wing. So we're gonna go as close to it as possible, if not just a little bit up on top of it. Because then we'll wrap in front and it'll help it from laying back. We want it to lay, or we want it to be propped pretty much straight up in the air when we're done here. A little more dubbing on my noodle. So once we're kind of happy with behind, you pull all those hair fibers rearward on top of that prop and we're going to sneak in front and then I always like to check underneath. Many times in the past I haven't been paying attention to the bottom of my fly and if you're not careful you can leave kind of a, a gap from behind the hair to in front of the hair. So if you do like a figure eight wrap around it one time it'll help ensure that you're covering up all that bare shank and thread wraps with the super, fly super fine dubbing as you want to. So again, we'll pull it all back, start to wrap kind of up on top of it, just check underneath. Head dubbing is needed. Continue forward once we're done setting this wing in place. Just make one more right in front of it there. And then we can work on forward. If you don't have any of these in your box, you, you should definitely consider it. BWO PMD. Very effective. You could do some larger March Brown type stuff and some different color combinations for your application. Whatever bug life you have, this fly can adapt easily and imitate a whole range of, of mayflies. Turn that out just a little bit. And half half hitch or uh, whip finish right behind the eye. And clip out our excess thread. 
and then we can position our hair wing where we want it here. So I just kind of always push it forward with my thumb and then I'll work it back and you can kind of fan it out to get that nice compare done or sparkle done style wing here. If you have any rogue fibers you can sneak in, clip those out. This, these arrow scissors make that a breeze or you can grab them with a pair of hackle pliers and yank them out as well. But there's a nice completed sparkle done for you. Just a pretty, pretty simple and clean fly. It can be a little tricky to tie the first few times, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too difficult. And the effectiveness of it is pretty unbeatable, really. So tie up some sparkle duns.